In this video, I'm going to give you five useful tips to help get you started with terrariums. My first tip, and arguably one of the most important, is the choice of plants you use. Where some plants love the humidity the terrarium provides, some certainly don't and won't last long. As a good rule of thumb, most tropical plants love to grow inside a terrarium, as they are from a part of the world that is generally high in humidity. I'll put a list on screen now of some super easy plants you can use. My next tip is the type of soil mix you use, or better known as the substrate. This is incredibly important as it's the lifeline of your terrarium's health. A good quality soil mix should have the following characteristics. Hold humidity, be light and fluffy and resistant to compression, drain well and provide nutrients for the plants. I'll put the soil mix I use up on screen now. I've used it in over a thousand terrariums and it hasn't let me down. However, if you're not able to make this mix yourself, most ready-made terrarium substrates work great. I'll put some links below. This next tip is optional, but it can completely transform the look of a terrarium. When it comes to hardscape, there's endless options which you can use, but in my experience, some are better than others. Most of the rocks and stones won't cause you any trouble at all, but when it comes to the wood, there's a few things to keep in mind. When adding it to a terrarium, it's highly likely it will cause a mold outbreak due to the organic nature of the wood and the high humidity the terrarium provides. This is completely normal and should clear up on its own, but it's always good to help the terrarium by manually removing it. Like I said earlier, hardscape is optional and you don't need it to make a healthy terrarium, but by using it you can really take your terrariums to the next level. My next tip is to use springtails. They are tiny little helpers that will help keep your terrarium clean and healthy. They do this by eating any mould or decaying matter that they can find. The moss and plants will provide sufficient oxygen for the springtails to survive and in turn they will help fertilise the soil. This terrarium is a great example of where springtails would come in handy. You can find springtails at most reptile shops and they are also widely available online. However, if you use moss you collected yourself from outside, chances are they're already present. This next tip is an important one. It's the light we use for our terrariums to grow. For this you have a couple options. Natural light or artificial light such as LEDs. When using natural light be sure not to use direct sunlight as the intensified heat will cook the plants inside. Instead find a bright spot in indirect sunlight. Personally I like to use LEDs due to their consistency. I'll put a link to these ones down below. Now you know some tips to help get you started, watch this video for a step-by-step -step build tutorial.